Hello friends, Beachtober is finally over and I'm pleased to say that I completed all 31 prompts. So join me now for a tour of the pieces that I created. This October I followed Furry Little Peach's prompt list. I used this dinky Royal Talon sketchbook, uh, my Posca pens and for the most part Stabilo Carbothello pencils. Uh, for more information on how I kept up with this prompt list, check out my Peachtober Tips video, which I'll link to at the end of this one. Uh, so before October started, I decided I wanted to decorate the end pages at the start of this book. This is something I've seen a YouTuber called Parul Aurora do um, to make a start on her sketchbooks. And I really enjoyed decorating this and feeling like I'd already started. In honour of Furry Little Peach, I decided to do some Little Peaches on the front cover. So day one's prompt was B. Um, I actually did all of my all of my pieces on the right hand side pages of this notebook and I used the left page to kind of brainstorm ideas and sometimes um, either try out different colour combinations or clean my poscas off because sometimes they get... I really enjoyed doing top down views. Uh, this is something I repeat several times in this month um, and B was the first one. Um, I did most of it with Poscas but I did the kind of honeycomb texture with coloured pencils. Um, it, I found as I talked about in my other video the coloured pencils were a little bit too waxy and kind of turned a bit shiny on top of the Poscas which I wasn't keen on um, but I did think it turned out really well and I quite like how it's a bit lighter and then darker in places uh, and not all one uniform colour. Day two was Cosmos and I chose to do uh, the flower called Cosmos. Um, I really enjoyed how delicate the petals were with this. Um, and in this case, again, the pencils actually worked really nicely on this just to kind of shade the colour a little bit um, and have it a little bit more yellowy in places. Uh, day four was sweet and this was actually the first piece that I started working on. I started this about mid-October and still didn't finish it until about day three. Um, but I had a really clear idea that I wanted a collection of pick and mix sweets. And honestly, every time I see this, I want to go to the corner shop and go and get some sweeties. I, again, I tried to use the colouring pencils to add in shadow and make them look a bit more 3D. But I don't know if you can tell, it turns parts of it shiny and I'm not so keen on that. Um, but overall, I really love this piece. I wish I'd done, um, used a micron marker instead of uh, one of the uh, PC1MR uh, Posca pens. I found that was a little bit too chunky for the outlines, but overall, I really like this piece. Uh, day four was Grub. I really like this idea of having uh, someone in red welly boots jumping in a muddy puddle and getting all grubby. Um, again, I, where the pencil is, it has turned the paper quite shiny, which I'm not so keen on, and I do not know what's going on with the shape of these boots. Uh, this actually prompted me to go and look up some more references for boots uh, for one that I do later. Um, but I'm really happy with kind of the folds of the fabric on the trousers and the shape of the puddle I really liked. Day five was sprig. I played around with a few different ideas of twigs and maybe a few pieces of rosemary, but I ended up going with this bunch of lavender. It is one of my favorite plants and I love the smell of it. Um, I'm not super keen on this as a piece. I think I like this, but there's an awful lot of blank space and I wish I'd done something else with it. I also got purple Posca all over the, the paper, which I've struggled to clean up. Uh, day six was I. Um, I tried out a few different concepts for eyes, uh, including thinking about trying something more stylized and cartoony. Um, but in the end, I really enjoyed making this cat's eye. Um, I, I wanted the fur to be black, but it ended up turning out quite brown because um, I used brown as a, as a base. But other than that, I'm really happy with the shape and how much kind of the, the depth of the yellow going into the green and how it, it pops. I, yeah, I really enjoyed doing this. I, I want to, I feel like I want to do more eyes in the future. This has spurred me on to do more. Um, day seven was crater. I really struggled with this prompt. I thought about having someone standing on the edge of a crater. In the end, I went for what I thought is one of my simpler pieces with this blue moon covered in craters and then purple space in the background with pink stars. Honestly, I really like the color scheme here. 
I mean, I tend to go for pink, purple and blue as the bisexual colours quite often. It just has turned into a colour scheme I really like. But I think here the pink stars look quite subtle and it makes the blue of the moon pop quite nicely. So I really enjoyed that. Um, and actually this is kind of a universe I come back to in later pieces. Uh, piece eight is Dream. Again, I wasn't sure what to do with this one. So I decided to think about the fact that since I had to quit nursing due to my disability, I've kind of fallen back on art as a career. And this was my dream job when I was like 15, 16. Um, so it's kind of ironic to me that this is what I've ended up doing as my, I guess more like, it's somewhere between a hobby and a career at this point. Um, so I just thought I would draw out some drawing supplies. I'm particularly enjoying inks and using Posca pens at the moment. I really enjoyed using the Carbothello pencils that are kind of chalkier than the colouring pencils I've been using to create shadow. And I think the shadow works really nicely here where I've used uh, different colours on the desk and the paper to create that shadow. I also struggled with this one. I think I feel like I had a run of like three or four pieces that I didn't really know what to do and didn't quite come out how I wanted to. Um, I think possibly this was the last one of that run. Um, I went back to a design I'd done previously uh, digitally with some blue butterflies. Um, again, enjoying that top down look, but I'm happy enough with it. I I kind of wanted to redo it to have another go at doing the butterflies, but honestly, I was trying to not stress out too much about having perfect pieces and more just creating something and if it didn't turn out how I wanted, moving on the next day to create something else. Um, this was one of my favourite pieces. I really enjoyed doing citrus, again a top down look um, at slices of orange, lemon and chunks of lime. Um, digitally I've done a few repeating patterns uh, which I then put onto my Redbubble account um, so you can go and buy images that I've created on mugs and t-shirts and leggings and things um, and as soon as I posted this one of my good friends um, said how she'd really love it and I think she said she'd really love it as like dress fabric or something uh, which inspired me to turn this um, to move over to digitally with it kind of recreate it as a repeating pattern and then put it onto my Redbubble account. Um, I'm really tempted to buy this as a mug if it's not weird to buy my own merchandise. Uh, day 11 was pencil and again kind of following a theme from the dream prompt I wanted to do uh, another item on my desk. I have mugs of pencils and paintbrushes and pens all over the place. My organisation system on my desk has not been sorted yet so I thought I would recreate that as a mug with pencils in. Again using the Carbothello pencils to shade. Um, day 12 was Nest. I really like my concept for this of somebody snuggled up in a blanket and surrounded by cups of tea and books and chocolate, which is me half the time when my fatigue is really bad. Um, I just create a little nest for myself. And I, again, I really like how the Carbothello pencils were able to create nice shadow on the folds of the blanket, especially, and in the cushions in the background. I, I'm really happy with how that worked out. I think, I think at this point I was really enjoying the combination of Posca pens and the Carbothello pencils. Okay, so I try really hard not to say that I hate my work, but I think this was the, mm, let's go with least strong of all the pieces that I have created. Um, I really struggled with the prompt for ship. Um, I have never drawn a ship before that I'm aware of. Uh, I wish I'd gone for something simpler of like a zoomed out view of a ship, but I wanted to do kind of a cross section showing the hull, is that the right word? The hull of a ship, maybe with some barnacles on and some fish swimming by. Um, I think the only thing that I do like about this picture is kind of the, the how, how I've tried to recreate the waves of the different colours as the water is moving. Otherwise, yeah, this was again a piece that I've kind of had to put behind me and move on. Um, day 14's prompt was garden. Um, I actually, earlier this year, I turned a pair of my old Doc Martens that were not wearable anymore into a planter with some time growing out. Um, I do have the footage 
recorded somewhere and when I find it I will eventually put it up on my YouTube as well. Um, I In this one I used some references for the boots and I feel like they turned out better uh, than the, the boots I drew for Grub. Um, and I'm really happy with how the plants kind of cascading over the boots turned out in this one. Uh, day 15 was weather um, and I wanted to draw some happy clouds even though they're raining they're happy because they're doing what they love to do. I've seen quite a lot of illustrators do smiling faces on various different inanimate objects um, and I, I really wanted to find my own way to do the face instead of what I've seen uh, artists like Furry Little Peach and others do. I love what they do but I wanted to find my own style with this and not just straight copy from her work um, and I actually really like the kind of squared rounded off rectangle eyes. Um, I love this prompt so much that I then also turned this one digital. Uh, I tried it out in a few different colours and then uh, when I was having a really bad day where I couldn't get out of bed I spent about eight hours creating uh, an animated loop of one of these clouds just raining continuously. Day 16 was Sidekick. Uh, for a long time I wasn't sure what I'd do for this one, um, but since I've started referring to my cat Echo as my studio buddy, because she likes to come and hang out in the studio with me when I'm working, um, I decided that she is the sidekick that I would go for. I really enjoyed kind of working on the perspective and doing the line around it kind of broken, so this cream wall blends into the background of it. I don't know, there's something about the shape of this that I really enjoyed. I definitely want to do some more practice of drawing cats because I feel like I've mostly got the shape of them in my head, but they always turn out quite not how I want. So I feel like some uh, reference drawing would be good of this. This page is very mucky because I got pencil all over me. So I will, there we go. I really need to go through this and use fixative on all of the pages that I've used the Carpathellos on because they spread everywhere. Uh, day 17 was blush. I really enjoyed creating these makeup brushes with uh, concealer, blush and eyeshadow on. I think the eyeshadow in particular turned out really nicely. I think the blue and then with a Carpathello chalky blue over it looked quite nice. Uh, because this was quite a simple drawing, I decided to do the black outline which I messed up a bit, which is why there's double lines, but I feel like I made it work. And I actually, I then started really liking this with the outline on it, kind of bringing everything together. So this is a composition that I then used in, in later pictures as well. Um, I really love day eight, day eight, 18. Day 18 is snooze um, and I wanted to draw an alarm clock at sometime around eight in the morning with a snooze button on. I've seen quite a few people create glow effects with Poscas and that's what I really wanted to recreate. So these are a white line with a light yellow and then an orange around them, um, which I think stand out really nicely with the dark background. Um, I really enjoyed doing this one. And yeah, you can see all of the Carpathello chalk pencils rubbing off onto the following page. Again, really need to go and fix these. Day 19 was Candle. Um, so I drew some candles. I was hoping to use the pencils to create a glow around each of the flames, a little bit like I had in the previous one. I don't think it turned out quite how I wanted. I think maybe these pencils aren't the right thing to use for this specific kind of glow effect. It's something I've done digitally and really enjoyed creating a blur to make flames look more realistic. I'm yet to figure out how to do that in my analog work. Uh, day 20 was bulb, um, so I decided to draw a picture of some bulbs, some tulip bulbs ready to go in their flower pot, which reminds me I really need to go out and plant my tulip bulbs before it gets too cold, and I keep forgetting, even though I drew a picture of it to remind me. Uh, day 21 was slingshot, so I revisited the world uh, where I created the little blue moon with the craters in, and because I'm a massive Star Trek fan and they seem to really like a good slingshot around a planet manoeuvre. Um, I drew a rocket slingshotting around a planet. Um, this was mostly done in Poscas. I only used the pencils really lightly on the two blue areas. Um, but I'm really pleased with how I created these swirl patterns in the Posca. Um, using the darker pink, the fuchsia colour, really lightly to create the swirls. And I also 
use washi tape to mark off the edges creating a smaller piece on the page and again I found I really liked this I feel like this contrasts the uh, the full cover images quite nicely I think having a combination of the two works really well day 22 was tunnel I had this vision of a tunnel through like a mountainside but instead of going leading to the inside of the mountain or the other side of the mountain it goes to a nighttime world again back on that planet with the purple sky and the pink stars and the blue moon um i'm not sure how well it worked i feel like i maybe should have done some of the inside of the tunnel as well um but overall i really like this piece okay so i messed up day 23 uh, the prompt was actually message, but for some reason I read it as massage. So I drew a picture of a person, possibly me, lying down having a hot stone massage and um, wrapped in a towel. Because the piece was quite simple, I decided to try and add in some of my tattoos. I've got a picture of a swallow on the back of one arm and some ivy going up uh, my side and back. I don't think it quite worked with the tattoos. I'm not sure what this, this thing is. It looks like some kind of creepy abomination, possibly out of a Ghibli movie. But there you go. Next time I do tattoos, I will not just freehand them with a Micron pen. Uh, again, quite a, quite a simple one. So I reused the idea of using the Micron to create a border around it. I really enjoyed creating the sparks and using two colours of a lighter pink and darker pink, uh, a purple and a black and a light blue and dark blue to create kind of depth within the sparks and I think that that worked really well on this piece. Day 25 was coral. I don't think this piece turned out quite how I wanted it to. I wanted this kind of orange mass in the corner with lots of darker orange or red squiggly lines outlining a really intricate coral um I, I also drew flame angelfish to be swimming around the coral i like the gradient that i've done on the blue background i think the problem that i had was i created the the coral too chunky i think my original image of it had been super super intricate and then to make it a bit more exciting i then used different carbothello pencils to color them in and i think that's where it diverted from what I wanted, and I'm less keen on it for that. But I think it's a nice, bright, happy piece. Day 26 was Ladybug. Uh, I really enjoyed creating these. Again, a top-down view of a bunch of ladybugs, or as we say in the UK, ladybirds, hanging out on a leaf. I really enjoyed masking off a square for the green of the leaf to be, and then the ladybugs just kind of walking all over it. I feel like this might be a pattern I want to revisit digitally for a future uh, repeating pattern. Day 27 was Pond. Um, I really enjoyed creating this, um, this kind of cut through view of a pond with some little tadpoles swimming around and some dragonflies uh, flying up around the flowers. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed this one. Uh, 28 was Chomp. I was a bit stuck on this one. I thought about maybe a piece of cake to bite into, but just something visceral about the word chomp. And I think it just brought to mind the crunchiness of a carrot. Um, so quite a simple piece of the three carrots and then pulled together uh, with the outline. Day 29, I really enjoyed doing, uh, the prompt was float and I wanted to do an autumn leaf floating on some water. I really enjoyed using the Poscas to create uh, different autumn colors within the leaf and then the Carbothello pencils to create the reflection in the water. Day 30 was moss, and I had this vision of a wall um, with some bricks along the top that are covered in moss. Uh, I think my favorite part of this was using a micron pen to create cracks in the, the plaster or concrete of the wall, actually. And then the final prompt on day 31 was spooky. Uh, I'm really glad I got to do, draw these little ghosts in here there's something i've created digitally before um and really enjoyed the shape of um and a pumpkin this was the first year i've ever carved a pumpkin so i had to have that on the final picture so that's it for peachtober um do let me know what your favorite piece was 
if you want to see the individual pieces I created this year, head over to my Instagram uh, where I've posted all of them. And as I said, there's quite a few things that I learned this year doing Peachtober for the first time. So when you finish watching this one, head over to the next video, which will be my Peachtober tips. Thanks for watching.